Hey guys, welcome back to Evidence-Based Weight Loss, part seven. We're not even halfway through this series yet. We got part 20 eventually coming. The series should end in roughly about June. Today's date is March 4th, 2021. Anyways guys, just a reminder, I encourage you to take notes on your phone, on Google Drive, on Microsoft Word, because uh, there's a lot of information in this 20 part series. Uh, I encourage you guys, make these changes, apply these concepts that we're going over. Uh, it doesn't do you any good to have the knowledge, but not do anything with it. It doesn't matter if you have the world's greatest trainer, the world's best nutritionist, and the world's best doctor. All three of them working together synergistically with you. If you're not willing to make changes, change is not going to happen. A couple of videos ago, I talked about my weight loss journey. That might be a good start. But anyways, I'm really passionate about helping people lose weight and get healthy and feel fit and feel good in their bodies. It's just, it's really a passion of mine. That's why I studied that book, How Not to Diet by Dr. Greger. I took basically the spark notes of that book. I am the spark notes. And we're making this video series here. So it's a real passion of mine, so please share this video with others so that we can help more people lose weight. So let's talk about leptin resistance. Obesity is thought to be caused by leptin resistance, similar to insulin resistance when the body has more than enough insulin. So the hypothalamus, an area of the brain that tells us when we're hot to sweat, tells us when we're cold to shiver, is the same area of our brain that controls uh, how satiated we feel, how full we feel. This is the same area of the brain. Children that exceed 100 pounds by age four can be leptin deficient, have a leptin deficiency. If you feed lab animals uh, saturated fat, they uh, become leptin deficient. Inflammation goes in their brain and then it thus causes leptin resistance and overeating. When these animals in these studies returned to their normal diets, uh, this leptin deficiency disappeared and they were able to lose weight. The takeaway message here is to eat a low saturated fat diet as that seems to be causing leptin deficiency. People that are leptin deficiency just seem to pack on the pounds. For example, a four year old can gain up to 100 pounds by the age of four, which obviously is highly obese for a four year old. I couldn't imagine that. Our daughter's not even three yet. And her weighing 100 pounds, I couldn't imagine her weighing 100 pounds, up to 100 pounds in a little over a year from now. That's insane to think about. The advice here is to just avoid saturated fats. That's primarily in uh, coconut oil, palm oil, meat, dairy, eggs. That's where your saturated sources are gonna come from. So my suggestion would be to highly uh, eliminate that, severely eliminate that, if not get rid of it completely. We also have obesogenic chemicals. I talked about this in part two of how the obesity demic started. One of, my, one of my beliefs is that we have these obesogenic chemicals in our environment, which is just causing rapid weight gain in us. So my advice, the less uh, seafood you have, probably the better. Mercury is supposedly an obesogenic chemical. So that might just pack, pack on the pounds. Avoid canned things if possible. Even if it says BPA free, they gotta use other kind of chemicals. Remember, they gotta replace it with. So I think the less canned stuff you can have, the better. People that eat canned soups can raise their BPA levels in their urine by 1000%. And then obviously we got the mercury and cadmium, ca cadmium in uh, our oceans and fish. All right, so the next tip on losing weight. Uh, fiber depleted diets, I believe is absolutely causing weight gain. It's recommended that women get up to 26 grams of fiber in a day and men get up to 38 grams of fiber a day. I think that's by the American Heart Association. Don't quote me on what that source is. It's from some kind of governing source. Uh, supposedly 98% of Americans are not getting that and supposedly even half the population isn't even getting half of those amount of fiber. Uh, I'll try to remember to put in the YouTube cards up here, otherwise just go look in our previous video. The video is not even a year old, but I talk about in a video what 110 grams of fiber looks like in a day. Uh, we, I eat 110 grams of fiber. I show the video, I put, put it into MyFitnessPal, I believe was the app I put it into. I show what I ate that day. So I guess that might put me and Sarah in the 0.01% of population of most fiber if 98% is not even getting enough, and then we're eating 110 grams, as much fiber as people are eating in a week, that's just an assumption though. 
But uh, so it, it is possible. But why does fiber help you lose weight? Let's talk about how, how a high fiber diet helps you lose weight. First of all, fiber depleted meals leave your stomach 45 minutes earlier than uh, food that has the fiber intact. To eat fiber, the excess calories get trapped in the fiber and thus you poop it out into the toilet, the excess calories. Eating enough fibers, fiber in a day may be enough to shave 100 calories off of you every single day, which is enough to keep that weight from creeping back up. I mean, that's 700 calories in a week and then seven times four, 2,800 calories a month. Yeah, definitely, that can keep that weight that likes to slowly just creep up on us. So fiber, eat your fiber, fruits and vegetables, plant foods. Remember, animal products have zero fiber in them. If you want really good sources of fiber, I highly suggest oatmeal, blueberries, beans, lentils. Those things are excellent source of fiber. Avocado, sweet potatoes, high, high sources of fiber. And then when you eat fiber, you burn an extra 50 calories, 2% of calories in a day. Uh, we talked about before the thermic effect of food. Your body burns about 10% of your calories in a day just by digesting your food. Well, when you got all that fiber showing in your stomach, your body is working to digest that and break that down. It's got some work to do. So you're gonna burn more calories by eating more fiber. Dr. Greger saying in his book from one of the studies he went over, 24 grams of fiber, then four hours later, your uh, ghrelin levels are suppressed as if you they had just eaten 500 calories. Overweight 11 and 12 year olds had been randomized to increase fiber intake for 16 weeks and ended up eating hundreds of fewer calories at a buffet meal compared to the placebo group. So of course fiber is filling so it's going to cause you to naturally eat less. Not to mention you, you it helps you uh, poop out excessive calories out of your butt. By eating beans the night before that can um, suppress uh, or that can make that can help you make you feel more satiated uh, even the next day even more than 12 hours later according to one study all right so we talked about re leptin resistance check we talked about obesogenic chemicals check we talked about fiber check let's go over another thing that can help you lose weight and that is water content in foods so for example if you eat an oatmeal cookie with the same amount of fiber is uh, apple and pear. Which of the three do you think is going to be most filling? Take a guess. Is it going to be the apple, the pear, or the oatmeal cookie? And the answer is apple and pear because it's high water content. The oatmeal cookie does not have it. Even though it's the same amount of fiber, think about it. The apple and that pear is going to be way heavier than that cookie with the same amount of grams of fiber in it. Because remember, oats are Oats are usually in those oatmeal cookies and those are going to be high in fiber. But yeah, those, they weigh a lot. Um, apples and pears, those will fill you up in no time. So water con foods that are high in water content can really help fill you up. Now let's talk about foods that are 90 to 100% water content. Uh, I encourage you to get a notebook, write these down or type these on your computer because these foods are high in water, which means they're going to fill you up really fast which means you're not going to need to put, uh, you're not going to need to eat junk food. You're going to be filled in no time, which means you're going to consume less calories. So uh, be, be ready to pause and write these down. I, I encourage you to do that. I, I might try to put some of these above my head. We got 90 to 100% water content. It's asparagus, beets, bell peppers, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, celery, cucumber, grapefruit, green beans, greens, lettuce, melons, mushrooms, onions, pumpkins, strawberries, summer squash, tomatoes, zucchini. And then so foods that are 80 to 89 percent content of water. Apples, apricots, artichoke, bean sprouts, brussels sprouts, carrots, cherries, grapes, kiwi fruit, mangoes, oatmeal, berries, citrus, pears, peas, pineapples, plums, tofu, winter squash. And then last one we'll go over 70 to 79% water content. Avocado, bananas, canned beans, corn, edamame, pomegranates, potatoes, quinoa, rice, and sweet potatoes. Uh, one study that Dr. Greger looked at says if you have a casserole for lunch but you eat that 
with if you have that with wa with water, you're not really gonna eat less. But if you blend that casserole into a soup, you'll actually consume about 400. You'll consume 300 calories versus 400 calories. So you'll consume 100 calories less. All right, and then we got one more factor: salt intake. So I think we got we got five things to take away from this video. That would be obesogenic chemicals, leptin resistance, fiber, water content, and salt intake. So children with the saltiest diets double their odds of obesity. Here's the study above my head. You can look it up at this website. Salt can make you retain water as well. Study up here. Those who have more salt appear to be more fat with less lean tissue, even when controlling for other lifestyle factors, according to this study. And then, when people switch to a low salt diet, their ghrelin levels drop, but when they go to a high salt diet, these levels of ghrelin just shot way up. So those are the five takeaways in this video. Let's just quickly review. First of all, A, your hunger hormone levels can be off due to saturated fat. So avoid saturated fat. Two, obesogenic chemicals due to fish from polluted waters and canned foods. Those are just naturally gonna make you put on weight because of these uh, chemicals. So avoid those. Three, increase your fiber intake. You've got a lot more digestion to do. It fills you up. And not only does it fill you up, it helps you, it, it helps you poop out excess calories. And then tip number four was to have high water content foods because those are filling, which causes you to eat less and take in less calories. And then tip number five is have less salt in your diet because apparently it makes you retain water and uh, keeps you fat. And I apologize for the background noise. So hope you guys enjoyed this series. Hope you guys just enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. This is uh, still a lot more videos to come. As I mentioned, I'm really passionate about helping people lose weight. So uh, yeah, we will see you in the next video. I don't know what part eight is on, but we'll find out next week. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Please share this with those who are trying to lose weight. It is a real passion of mine to help people lose weight. So please share it. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.